and this is 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Kal halal yahawah b'ashem, yahawah shai b'ashem rekwa kadash. Double honors, the apostle and elders of great millstone, where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations, their brothers, and down teaching, preaching, pushing this gospel. Good news to the four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles. I call this lesson from the text there, ye have no need that I write unto you. It's just an uh, exhortation, like a, a little warning to all of us, to myself first. I've got to measure thou the time. I think that's a uh, second estrus. We're measuring the time. We're watching. We're seeing this so-called white man, the Edomite in the scripture, our power, whose name is Yahweh's only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, has got this man bang to rights. All the evidence has piled up. He's got nowhere to go. He's a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. All his crimes, everyone can see them. People he didn't even realize, he probably thought they were his friends. They're all ganging up, making new alliances against this so-called white man, the Edomite in the scripture. And so his playbook, which is it's all played out, the problem, he puts up all this chaos that he's pushing forward. Then he sits back to see what kind of reaction there's going to be. And when it all uh, kicks off, then he comes in with his solution. But there's more and more people are alert and aware of this man's tricks. That's why you call him the devil. That's what it means, a, a liar, deceiver, slanderer. We know who you are, and many, many people know who you are. Let's get straight back to it. Uh, same scripture here, let's read on First Thessalonians. Go from, so chapter five, go from two. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace, and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape so all the other 17 nations a total of 18 this man has created nearly 200 nations but there's only 18 as listed in the scriptures and we go with what the book says and not with what this man said he's a liar He's chopped up all the earth. That's why he's got all these wars. He's created all these borders and, and different lands and named lands after himself. As the scripture says, he would do. So he's identified himself in his activities. And sudden destruction is coming up on them. But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light. And the children of the day, we are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, see, there's a possessive pronoun there, this us and they, who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet the hope of salvation. In time I look at that, the helmet goes on your head. That's your mind. You need to protect it. For the Most High hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. See, it's a win-win for the Hebrew Israelites. We don't care what they want to call us. All these derogatory terms, uh, uh, black, you know, uh, Negro, you know, uh, Hispanic, Latino, Native Americans, and all the other names of which he's created, all these named uh, countries. I'm speaking to you here from up in the hills in Jamaica. But we're Hebrew Israelites of the various tribes. We trace our lineage back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's who we are. And his playbook is not going to work on the hopeful elect. That's what we refer to ourselves at this time. Let's get some more here. We're going to keep it moving. Matthew 16. Let's go from 1 to 4. Someone just started playing some music there. I hope you're not picking that up. Let's raise my voice. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempted, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. This is one of these altercations. Yahweh was having with these uh, uh, wicked Pharisees following him around, trip him up 
on his words. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red in the morning. It will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? Well, no, they can't because they don't accept him. So they don't know anything about any signs of any times. That's including him. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them, you imagine, with a frown on his face and departed. So looking for a carnal type of scenario. And Yahweh is telling them, look, I've told you, but you're not interested. Luke 21, let's get more of the same here. Luke 21, let's go from 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perfect perplexity, if I can say the word, the sea and the waves roaring. And we're seeing it now, there's flooding all over the place, there's various different types of moons, I can't remember if it's a red moon and all kind of eclipses and what have you. It's all happening at the same time. Men's heart failing, there's a heart attack. For fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. That's that massive fathership that's going to appear on the horizon coming from the east. Verse 28, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Oh yes, we're looking up. So uh, it reminds me of you traveling anywhere if you have children with you often ask, are we there yet? How much longer is it going to take? The prophets asked this. Several of the prophets was wondering, how much longer the disciples when Yahweh was resurrected? One of the first questions they asked him, are you going to set up your kingdom now? Not realizing how much more prophecy was left to be fulfilled. Well, we're getting close now. We're getting close. Uh, 33. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, that's like overindulgence, overeating, uh, uh, the drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares, for as a snare shall it come upon come on all them that dwell on the face of the earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things. What things? All of the dreadful, of the famine and all the flooding and the disastrous effects of the wrath and fury that has already started. The angels have surely been given a little leeway to start, get it started. You can see it happening all around you. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Get some here in Timothy. You have no need to write that I write unto you, says Paul, to the church in Thessalonica of Hebrew Israelites. First Timothy 4. Let's just get the first two verses here. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. We've seen some people that know they're Hebrew Israelites, but you can't believe what a, a madness is coming out of their mouth. It's incredible, but you, you turn back to the scriptures and you see, oh, that's what's going on here. It's seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, that's all uh, looking for fame and fortune on this side. They want to uh, big themselves up look at me i've got all this spotlight i've got all this money they know everything all of a sudden it's incredible watching them they're speaking lies in hypocrisy the word hypocrisy means to act you're an actor that's what it means it's false pretense i'm pretending to be something i'm not having their conscience seared with a hot iron speaking all manner of shit day in day out one minute they appear to be uh, 
controlling their emotion. The next minute, it's some foolishness they're spewing out of their mouth. Hard to keep up with their madness. Second Timothy 3, let's go from 1. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. You see? Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are no good. So this incontinent, it's like no self-control. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of the most high. See? They know it all. They've got their own. It's of having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. I'm just going to read a few more here. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts. See, a lot of the followers of these people, they are women because this truth is not given to these women. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jannies and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, and we seen it on display, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience. I'll hold it there on that scripture. A little madness going on in Israel. Job 8. I think we just had a few verses here to make this point. Let's go from 7. Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. That's what we're doing. This is people think this is a new doctrine. No, it's not new. There's nothing new. Just uh, knowing who you are, knowing who this Edomite is. That's it's not new. This is old, and it's the old path that is being stirred up. The pure minds. Get that in a minute. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. For we are but of yesterday, and know nothing, because our days upon earth are a shadow. Shall not they teach thee, and tell thee, and utter words out of their heart? That's a lab, meaning mind in the Hebrew. So it's this uh, old way. The ways of our fathers, that old path, that's what's been stirred up. Let's get that in uh, Second Peter. That's Second Peter 3. Let's go from 1. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. See? that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, the prophets of old. That's who's back, that's who's preaching and teaching, that's who we're learning from. And of the commandments of the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. So that's what people are saying. We've been hearing all this stuff about this implantable device from the time I was a little boy, a little girl. What's different now? Well, it's here now. The technology is here. All the infrastructure. They've done all of their um, practice runs and whatever they want to call it, their uh, testing. It's all been happening for years. This plan has been in the making for years. So they're coming with this implantable device any day now they're going to start pushing it wholesale and it's going to be made mandatory that's what we are looking for you have no need that i write unto you it's not going to come to you as a thief in the night because you know what you're looking for oh yes where were we let's get a few last few verses for this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of the Most High, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overshadowed with water, perished. 
that's the flood, but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. That's who's going to go into the fire. And unfortunately, two-thirds, the majority of Hebrew Israelites are going to be joining the other 17 nations in America, which is Babylon the Great, in that lake of fire. That's what's coming. We're going to wrap up with Joel 2. Let's go from 1 to 3 here. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, it's close, it's near. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. There have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Verse 3, a fire devoureth before them and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. Fire is coming. Fire is being readied as we prepare these nuclear weapons are being warmed up. They're practicing shooting them off, giving out warnings this very week. The two major players, Babylon the Great and Gog and Magog, are giving out warnings. I think today is one of them, I think over there in, uh, in Russia. Gog, Magog, the Medes, they're giving out a warning. And then the following day on the 4th of October, 2023, I think Babylon the Great are scheduled to do a similar emergency warning to their people. What are they preparing for? The third woe, as it says in the scriptures, Joel 2, let's get these last few verses here, starting at 30. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, his name is Yahweh, his only begotten, his son is Yahweh Shai, shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. As the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. He's the one doing the calling. And it's only the remnant of the house of Israel who's going to be awoken to this truth. Everybody else is going to perish. If you don't perish, you're getting ready to go into slavery anyway. So you're going to lose either way. It's your turn. Let's wrap up with just this single verse here in Revelation 3 and 3. Remember, therefore, great letter Yahweh is speaking. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard. And hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. See? I guess it's a warning. You have no need that I write unto you. Shalom to the next lesson. Fear no God.